also like I felt like the, I couldn't balance between the two because I was, you know, going to the mosque and stuff, but I, but I was still, you know, hooking up with guys and I was still, you know, being gay really. So I, so I was like, well, how, how, how am I gonna find this balance? Shit hit the fan. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it was. Um, my dad felt disrespected. I was born in Iraq uh, in 1987. Um, we moved here when I was 10 years old. Um, I lived, you know, with my you know, family, my, my dad and my mom and my two sisters. And I used to always have, make my sisters do beauty pageants with me. And I sometimes, I got one sometimes wore my sister's dress. I've always known about myself. I was, it was something that I've always like been attracted to since I was a little kid. Actually, the first time that ever happened, I came out to my sister, Rand. I think I was like about 13, 14 um, years old. We were like driving like around our, like in Coquitlam. And we were talking about something, and then and we mentioned about a coworker and stuff, and like, and I just like told her, I was like, oh, random gay, and she's like, she's like, you know, she's she's always known it. So I remember it briefly, and it it was I kind of I kind of laughed a little. I'm like, yes, Hassan, I I've always known Habibi. I've always known. When I was like 15 or so, my dad once found out um, he saw an MSN conversation between me and this guy. And he uh, said, you know, he took me to Tim Hortons and he was just like, Hassan, are you G? He, he didn't even say, are you gay? He's like, Hassan, are you G? And then the tears were just like coming down from his eyes and stuff. And I was, I was, you know, young at the time and I was like, no, I'm, I'm not. I was like, dad, no, I'm not. Well, I'm not. Don't, and, you know, I was just like trying to like, you know, because I was, I was scared. Like, I was like, what's going to happen? You know, what was he going to do? Right. And then he was like, he's like, well, I'll help you like, you know, change and everything. He's like, don't, you know, be gay going forward, uh, you know, change your lifestyle. Trying to cover myself, so I told, oh, like, oh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a guy that like likes to sleep with guys, but I'm not gay. What it means in our culture, it means that um, you're a top, finding guys that you that you're not a bottom, that you're not, you know, on the receiving end. So well, by being a top, you're actually not gay. Technically, it's it's weird mentality they have. You're actually a guy that's looking for men to sleep with, but you're not actually. You know, you're not the one that gets that's getting fucked, right? So like, you're not being the bottom. So that in that in, the, in in their eyes, that's not as bad. So when I told him that, he's like, he didn't take it as bad. But he's like, hey, you should try to change and everything. My relationship with my dad fell apart in 2010, basically, when we went to um, on a trip to. Uh, like Europe and stuff and he knew like that I was like sleeping around with guys and stuff in Jordan and I was hooking up so our relationship just really kind of like fell apart after he just couldn't accept the fact that I was gay and stuff so he said you have two weeks um, you know I'm gonna kick you out of the house you have two weeks to find a, a job and, and all that um, you're not my son anymore there was a lot of tension in my house and a lot of pressure on me not to t take away from my brother but I was the middleman between um, both of them so my, I'm dealing with meeting with my brother and dealing with what he's going through on his end and then also trying to take my parents anger and speak to them and kind of help them see things from a different perspective I would always when my dad disagreed with it I would always say I was born to like men you can't tell me to like women it's the exact same thing I was I was depressed for a long time, you know, like especially going through the years. Like I was like on antidepressants for a while. Like I was just like really going through a lot. I was suicidal for a while. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I I'd, I'd cry day and night and stuff. You know, I was like it's not seeing or, you know, especially my mom. Like my dad, I'm sorry. Like I love my dad, but my mom, like she was the closest thing to me. And like I sometimes just wish I could just see her. And it's hard. It really is. It's just hard. You know, being disowned by your, a lot of your cousins, a lot of your family, and. It, just being like this outcast, like, you know, like this person that's just like not in the family anymore. You know, when I, when I just saw him, I just felt my heart just like skipped a beat and I just like saw, like, I swear for a moment, I was just like, I just saw 
my whole life too. I mean, he just shook my hands for me. Um, Tarn, I remember the first time we were all sitting, he had come this, Tarn, this big in his, in his beater. I'm like, oh, who is this? Who's this sexy Indian boy? <laughs> Um, but he had, um, I had met him at my parents' house, so what's nice is that my parents did get to meet him, so, and they loved him for who he was prior to knowing that him and Hassan were together. So deep down, I know the biggest thing with Tarn is just wanting to feel included and accepted and part of the family, and I know my parents loved him prior to this, and any thing they feel now about him is just because of the situation between him and my brother and what they are to one another. I know, Sophie's house, yeah, it says but yeah, it's gonna yeah. be good, yeah, for sure. It should be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to love you. Love you so much. Um, but as we became closer, I, I realized, I'm like, wow, I, I really like this guy. Uh, he's just, I, f I felt like I knew him from like a past life or something. He looked so familiar to me when I met him. And uh, we kissed each other for the first time. And it was honestly, it was, it was one of the most magical moments of my life. Tarn coming into my brother's life was, it was the push he needed. Um, and obviously it exemplifies the love that they have and that he was willing to stand up for, for what he believes in and put his family aside and um, follow his heart and go with Tarn. Even I look back at pictures from our last vacation, the last time all five of us were together um, and nothing has been the same ever since. Every birthday is a crying episode from both my parents. Um, any sort of happy celebration is meaningless they it's I'm um, like why do you do this to yourself you're look at you why are you sad why are you putting yourself through this and they I think eventually and this is this is a lot of society people care so much about what the outside world will think and and just to the point that they think maybe I believe this too and I think eventually my parents will set that aside um, and support their son Um, it's called God in Pink, the one that's getting published, and um, a novel set in Iraq. I was like, because I think if I set in Iraq, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's a very controversial topic, and it also deals with a lot of um, issues that's very timely now. So it's, uh, it's told from two different perspectives. The perspective of Rami, a gay man who's lost between his cultural, his sexuality, and his religion. And Amar is um, the homophobic, and he inherits homophobic qualities. And he, he's wondering why he received that, that letter from, you know, from Rami. And then the story then focuses on the, the two narrators and what's going to happen to the future, the future of the two. How it comes off, you know, disowning your kids, it does look as if we're knocking down my parents. I, there are no two people on this earth that love their kids more than my mom and my dad. Um, they, a lot of who we are, and if you, if you see the number one thing that most people love about my brother is his heart and his passion and his, how he treats everyone around him. This is after we get engaged, we're walking down the street and we run into uh, somebody that he knows, I guess somebody he went to SFU with. I've never met the person in my life. And this guy tells me, he's like, you know, this guy, this guy's been in love with you from like the day he's met you. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, he told me that, but go on. And so apparently not even a week or a couple of weeks after we met, not even when we started dating, not even anything, after we met, Hassan went to class and he told his friend, he's like, I met this guy Tarn, oh my god, I'm gonna marry him, I love him. The guy's like, whoa, you need to like... Slow it down. Slow it down a little bit, buddy. Um, and and this guy's telling me this and I'm just like, like wow, like, he, he knew and I wasn't even like interested at the beginning. I didn't think that it was gonna go anywhere, but he knew and, and he was right and I'm it's a decision that I'm, I'm so happy I made and uh, he's my soulmate. He's my yeah. soulmate and yeah. I've, just, I've never felt this way about anybody. Me neither. <laughs>